Hey everyone, I'm Jeff St. Laurent. It's the Tuesday call once again, every Tuesday <laughs> coming at you. Um, and a, a big piece of that is every Tuesday. And we want to remember that for our own businesses is that uh, pick something. It doesn't matter what it is, <laughs> a call, a podcast, a webinar, whatever it is, but um, come up with a schedule and do it every week. <laughs> and, and you know, market around it, let people know what's going on, get a recording out there, connect with people, do it every week. That's, that's my, my quick little, little tip for you there. And that's why I say the Tuesday call, it comes at you every week. And it's, you know, unless there's a major holiday or something like that, it's like we are on. Um, no excuses, just keep moving forward. Um, so just a, a couple of bits of business before we uh, get into today's topic, which is basically quitting your coaching business. So very interesting topic. Um, but yeah, with that being said, um, uh, I do record these calls and they are posted in my Selling Coaching University. So my website, sellingcoaching.com. And you can go check that out under the university. I've got a, a lot of uh, these Tuesday calls there, a lot of informative calls, a lot of different topics. I just recommend you use the search bar. Once you get to the university, type in some keywords and see what pops up. And then also um, right on my website, sellingcoaching.com, right at the very top, there's a, a link to my private Facebook group. And those of you that are, are not in there, I'd, I'd have you consider checking that out. And if you like what you see, you can request to join. Uh, just a great place for us to interact a little bit more and um, just kind of pushing people to you know, get themselves out there, speaking their message through videos, through things like that. So that's my private Facebook group. And lastly, of course, I am available for one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, so if that's something you're considering, um, mostly that you really want to move forward with your coaching business and you really want to take it to full time, but know it requires some assistance and some guidance, um, I am just, I love taking people from the start and helping them get focused and organized and helping them create a system and a plan and structure to move forward. So if that's, if that's something that does interest you or, or you just want to talk more about it casually without like, oh, you know, feeling sold on type of thing or having to commit, um, just send me an email. Uh, just go to my website, sellingcoaching.com, and go to the, the contact page or um, the work with me page and send me a, fill out the form and we can create a conversation and, and go from there. Uh, so today's topic is about quitting your coaching business. And we will have some time at the end of the call to kind of open this up um, because I, I do want to hear, you know, where people are at and, and kind of see also, um, you know, if people are, you know, are they coming to the call thinking, you know, for this topic, do I do I want to quit my coaching business? Is this has this even crossed your head um, or crossed your mind? And and honestly, um, if it hasn't crossed your mind yet, um, I hope it does. And the reason I say I hope it does is I'm not trying to be mean. It's because it means you're you're doing the work. It means you're getting out there and you're getting frustrated. You're you're getting some no shows. Your people aren't buying. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things going on. You're feeling lonely. You're feeling like you don't know what you're doing. Um, you're having these constant highs and lows of one minute feeling like this is the greatest thing in the world and like literally seconds later just being at the feeling like at the bottom of the barrel and that's the, if you will, the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. Um, I, I, can, I can promise you that, I don't know if I can use that word promise, but I can say that it is possible to have more of a flatline effect um, when you understand the business more and, and I found more importantly understanding yourself and how you operate within the business. And that's, that's a key phrase. It's not so much just understanding the business of coaching and the world of entrepreneurship. That's a big piece of it. But then once you understand, if you will, that game that you're wanting to or will be or are playing in, it's then more importantly, how do you operate within that game? It's like a, an athlete uh, who you know, is great at, I mean, pick a sport, let's just say baseball, who's great at, you know, first base, <laughs> um, or is a great pitcher. Um, you can't put a pitcher to play first base. It doesn't mean they can't play that role. Um, it just means that they thrive in as a pitcher. And so, you know, use any sports analogy you want or any position you'd like, um, but you've got to find like, how well you operate. There are certain things you can do well, and there are certain things you can't do well. And so that's what I, I want to kind of discuss today. And, and the reason this topic came up, I, I love to go in the moment with my Tuesday calls, meaning like I don't really pick the topics until Monday until I got to kind of get, get it out there to everybody. And this came up last week because one of my clients I've been working with uh, for a little while now, probably it's been about five months or so, 
and working with this person. And, and I could tell very early on that, you know, as much as they really wanted to do coaching, um, every, everything we were going over um, as, you know, kind of getting their coaching business off the ground and, and setting up some structure, going over some of the activities, you know, that they need to be doing on a daily basis, um, it was very challenging for them. And uh, they were, if you will, a perfectionist. And I'm sure as a lot of you start to listen to this, you might find some similarities or connections with this, this person. Um, and, you know, they, they definitely were perfectionists they, from their own mouth. Um, and I had said it too. Um, but with that perfectionism, um, just overthinking everything that was going on. Um, and so things were taking a long time to get done. And, and also they weren't, they weren't ever getting done. They weren't ever getting out there. And it's not that I was putting pressure on this person, et cetera. It was just, hey, it's not getting done. It's not getting done. Let's, let's see what we can do to get it done and get it out there. Um, but the, it was still slow and things like that. And, and one of the things I'll start right off with today is uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship, um, entrepreneurship, and I, when I say entrepreneurship, it's, I'm talking that because as a coach, you're an entrepreneur. It's, it's a coaching business, but the world of entrepreneurship is definitely its own animal, so to speak. It's, it's a completely different world than being uh, an employee, but yet, and today I'll, I'll parallel this, is yet there's a lot of uh, parallels that go along with it. And, and so where I start off with is as an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship rewards decision. It rewards action. Um, it's, it's not so great with uh, taking your time on things, meaning like you've just got to get stuff done and get it out there. And, and I'm not suggesting like, oh, you've got to just do it half-ass and just put it out there even if it's crap. I'm not saying put crap out there. I mean, do great work. Uh, yet what I'm saying is, is, is it, it might not be perfect. There might be a spelling error. Um, I, I think back to when I wrote my book back in, I published my book in, back in 2009 and I, the timeframes with which I wanted to get it done in based on an event that was being held, um, I basically had a couple months to write my book and, you know, the first two weeks I just totally, you know, blew because I didn't know what the heck I was doing or even writing about, you know. So basically I ended up turning out a 400 page book in basically a month and a half and to my surprise. Um, but the thing was, is, you know, there were points along the way where I was talking to my mentor and my mentor wasn't um, a coach per se in coaching me through things. And um, I remember uh, a lot of the times I would just, you know, go back to him and talk about certain things. And I remember one time he just, he just said to me on the phone, he's like, Jeff, just, just write the effing book. And he just cursed it right out to me and he's just write the effing book. And I'm like, all right. And that stuck with me and I wrote the effing book. You know, and he's like, he's like, if there's a spelling error, there's a spelling error. He's like, if, if something doesn't come out right, it doesn't come out right. He's like, he's like, you know how many people have books in them that, that, that don't ever publish their book? He's like, get the book out there. And he's like, start making some money in the book. Start helping some people with the book. Start getting some clients from the book. Start doing some speaking engagements from the book. He's like, if you've got a spelling error in there and someone comes to you and says, hey, Jeff, you spelled the word wrong. He's like, if that's the only thing that they receive from the book, it's their loss. You know, and that's the type of thinking that I really started to take on as I, as I was working with my mentor and uh, in, in working through entrepreneurship. And so I, I want to I say to you now is, is when it comes to thinking about your business and, you know, moving forward or do I quit, one thing I want you to assess about yourself is, you know, how am I in, in this spectrum of, and, and for the sake of conversation, I'll, I'll say the spectrum of one side or one end of the spectrum being very logical and thought-based, meaning you're a processor and everything that happens, and I'm being extreme here, so think about it as very extreme. So you could be towards this side, doesn't mean you have to be all the way down the end, but just think like an over-the-top person who just really analyzes and, and weighs out pros and cons and make lists and, and compares things and then deliberates and collaborates and <laughs> levitates, you know what I mean? And then even when they think they've come up with a decision, they, they still procrastinate on it and, oh, it's not quite right and I got to look into it maybe one more time or ask a few more opinions, right? There's that end of the spectrum and then let's go to the other end of the spectrum and let's just call it and I just call it ADD, and, and I'm proud of ADD. I'm completely ADD diagnosed. I actually take medicine for it, um, but it, it, it's, it, it's an ability, but it's, it's off the cuff. It's in the moment. It's, it just, it's acting before you think. The other end is, is thinking before you maybe act, right? 
but that ADDness is just it's it's doing things, it's rolling things out there. It's it's just it's jumping out when you really don't know what's going on and just figuring it out as you go and and making it work and just trusting in just who knows what, trusting in yourself, trusting in other people, trusting in the process, trusting that what's supposed to happen will happen. So if you can see that it's two very ends of the spectrum. And, and I'm not here to say, oh, if you're down the end of the super logical analyzation type spectrum, I'm not saying you cannot succeed in entrepreneurship. There are plenty of people who are like that who can succeed. What I am going to say is there's something to consider. If you are like that, that's going to be a real big challenge for you because um, you're, you've got to get things out there. You've got to move. Entrepreneurship is all about moving. Money is all about speed. When I say money is about speed, it means that you know, when people are ready to buy, they buy. When the timing is right, they seek, they buy. If you're not in front of them, if you're not getting your stuff out there on a regular basis, you're going to be missing out on things. You know, at the beginning of the call, when I started off, I said, you know, I do the Tuesday call every Tuesday. And I said, pick something. I don't care what it is. It's a call. It's a webinar. It's a whatever, right? It's Facebook Live. It's something. And do it every week. Um, and then, you know, do something around that every day to promote it or talk about it and things like that. And, and you just got to do it. When I get on with a mentoring client and, and we get to the phase where, you know, I'm talking with them about setting up their quote or metaphorical Tuesday call, meaning, you know, something that they're going to do every week to get out to their audience, create some content, interact with people, you know, and we're, we're kind of at that phase, you know, my first thing is, is like, you know, where are you at? What do you, what do you feel you'd gravitate to? How do you feel you'd work well? Uh, you know, um, and then from there, okay, let's set it up for next week. And they're always just like, are you kidding me? Like, no, just do it for next week. I'm like, no one, probably no one's going to show up, but I'm like, so you, if you're going to do it next week, you've got to figure out all the things that go along with it. You have me, I'll help you out wherever I need to and just make all the logistical things, you know, easier, at least give you some guidance on where to go or what to do. But I'm like, set it up and throw some emails out there, put it on some social platforms and just and show up, and if one person shows up, or if 10 shows up, then fantastic. Figure it out, and if you bomb, or if you suck, or, or whatever, like it's just, well, what happens from there? The next week, let's make it better, you know? And, and a lot of people have a challenge with that, but I'm, the reason I do that with them is because I know that um, until they do that, they're not gonna figure out all those other things. You know, entrepreneurship is a game about, um, it's figuring out as you go, and ideally, uh, you work with someone like myself, like a mentor, someone, not just a coach, but a mentor, someone who's been there and done that. There's a big difference. Someone who's doing what you're doing uh, on a level, you know, has created some level of success that you want to model them. I've been a big advocate because I've worked with, with my mentors and I, and I sought out people. I'm like, who, who do, who's doing what I want to do in the future? Who's doing it really well? What, and I want to model that. I want to stand how they did it so I can start to bring that into my own world. And so... Um, Ideally, you're, you're, you're figuring it out as you go, um, but then also you're working with a mentor so that they can help guide you so you don't have to make just simple mistakes and you can, you can make it a lot easier and take some of the anxiety, if you will, out of it. Um, but the reason I was talking about that call or you know, helping a client with that is because that's the type of action that you require in your business. It's setting up your private Facebook group and just, okay, it's there. Setting up my page. It's setting up a call. You know, it's, it's doing a video. And, and not having it be perfect and not knowing all the things about it, but it's setting it up, not knowing what you're going to talk about and just getting in front of the camera and just talking and see what comes out. And, and you know what? You're not going to like it. And, and I'm, I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying, and if you do, fantastic. But the majority of people aren't going to like it because, you know, it's not going to be as polished as you want it to be or you're not going to be as good as you think or would like you to be, yourself to be. But that's part of the game is the development, the personal development um, as we go through this process. And, and this goes into, you know, whether we move forward or not with our business, these are some considerations um, uh, for us to be thinking about as we start to move forward and becoming more like this. And, and I'm not trying to force someone and saying, oh, you know, if you're, if you're you know, thinking about things and process things, things a lot, um, be less like yourself. That's not what I'm saying at all, is I'm saying be more aware of how you operate. And then we've got to find a way for you to be able to get things out there. Um, so for instance, like I've worked with, uh, when I've mentored with people, I've worked with some very logical people and I found that the, one of the ways or strategies that I've helped them set up was, is, is by setting up dates, meaning you know, setting a date for their first call or for their first seminar or things like that and getting it out in public. And it just, because once they did that, it was kind of like they were committed. 
and there was a timeline and it was like, it, it was inevitable that if it was next week, it was just coming. And, and it was like something that they couldn't stop and they put it out there and they told people about it. So we leveraged uh, a value of theirs of saying, well, I'm not going to back out when I've committed to something. And so it didn't matter how logical they were. It just, it was only a matter of time before the call or the event or whatever would be there. Right. And so it, it, it kind of, in some ways it forces them to be able to figure out as they go along and they can still take as long as they want to process it. But once, you know, you know, time zero comes and the event's there, they're ready to go. Um, and that's a big piece of this. And so I talk about this piece because, uh, you know, when it comes to entrepreneurship, um, there's an element of getting out there and doing things. So one thing for you to think about is no matter where you are in the, in the spectrum of your coaching business is where am I along that spectrum? You know, on, more towards the very, very logical analytical side or more towards that ADD, ADD off the cuff, spur of the moment, let's just screw it, let's just try it out and see what happens. You know, where are you on that, on that spectrum? And um, again, I'm not saying either one is better, but I'm saying um, if you're getting whatever you do is you've got to be able to get to that place where you're getting more things out there. Um, a lot of the times, uh, you know, the mentors I've worked with and even just business associates as I've talked to people along the way that have created great success when they're launching programs and gosh, th some of the things I've launched with programs is, you know, the program is like a very small percentage done before it's actually launched. Meaning if I'm going to do a four week tele telephone class on, you know, pick a topic, you know, creating, you know, sales, something around, around sales and it's a four week class and I'm signing up people for it. Um, I might just have the title of the class with a description and maybe just a, a quick thought about what the class can be about enough to get it out there and market it and get people to sign up and pay for it. But that's it. I don't have all the four weeks planned out. I don't have all the content planned out. I've just got to get it out there and I've got to get people registered and I've got to get people signing up and I've got to do all that work. All right. And then once I've got people signed up, now it's like when it comes time for the first class with, let's say it's next week as it starts, as it gets closer to that, I'm like, okay, geez, you know, the class is in a couple of days. What am I going to be talking about on, you know, week one? And then when week one is done, Great, okay, here's what happened, here's some feedback, here's some thoughts, great. Now as week two comes, let me figure out week two. I'm doing it as I go. This is how entrepreneurship operates. It's not let me plan everything out and get it done and have it all nice, nice neat and perfect and then let me start to market it. Because um, the fact is, is you've got to be able to market it and, and sell, sell the seats, so to speak, and, and get paid so that you can actually develop the content. You know, don't sit there and develop the content and then try and fill the seats and then no one shows up or no one gets paid. And now you've got this nice, 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 pretty course and no one's consuming it. You know, that's why entrepreneurship is kind of more of on the fly. Just, you know, plan it, just do it and get it out there and then figure it out as you go along. So that's one thing you want to identify where you are on that spectrum. Um, I will say, uh, if I were to bet on anything, you're going to have a lot more challenging time the closer you are to that analytical side. And if you're going to be able to stay in this game and you're going to be able to get things out there, um, you're going to need to find a strategy on how you're going to be able to get over the, some of that perfection of yours enough to get your things out there even, even when you don't think it's, it's the best it could be. Because odds are it's never going to be that. Even if you got it to a level which, ooh, this is really good, what I found with most people is they, ne they, they still don't think it's good. They still, there's something that they could do better. And most of the time it's protecting them from, you know, the fear of failure or other fears they have uh, that it might not be successful uh, when it actually goes out there. So by keeping this perfectionist vision and trying to make it better and better, they never get an opportunity to put it out there and therefore they protect themselves from ever having to deal with, you know, no one buying it, no one liking it, et cetera. Um, and that's why we've just got to get it out there because um, if people don't like it, you'll never hear from them. And unless they really don't like it. But I found that most people, I've never heard from the people who don't like it. I've heard from the people who love it. And that's what the greatest part of it all is. So that's one, one aspect that we'll, we'll talk about right there. Um, and now when we start thinking about, you know, oh, quitting, oh, should I quit or should I stay, is you've got to realize that when it comes to entrepreneurship, um, there's a certain grind. You know, people talk about the nine to five grind, right? Or, you know, working a nine to five job. And, um, oh, I can't wait to not do that. I want to make my own schedule and things like that. Earlier in the call, I mentioned something about that, you know, entrepreneurship is different from being an employee, you know. But while they're different, there's a lot of similar parallels. And the similar parallels are what I'll talk about here is, is I always like to tell people as I'm mentoring with them, I'm like, you've got to treat your business like a job. Like a job meaning that 
you've got to show up in your office with office hours. Meaning if you, if you don't know when you're going to be, at, when do you have to be at work? And, and also, more importantly, also as an entrepreneur, when are you done with work? So when you have a job, it's like, I, I work, let's say I work from 9 to 5, right? I've got to get my butt to work for 9 o'clock. If I'm constantly up showing up late, it's going to reflect poor me and I'm probably going to get a warning or people are going to talk to me about it. You know, and then when do I leave? Well, I can't leave at four if I'm working till five, right? I, I work till five o'clock and then I can leave. And I shut things down and I go on and I, now I don't work anymore. Now I can be with my family. I can play some sports. I can have some fun. I can relax. I can do errands, right? I can live my life. So with entrepreneurship, you've got to be able to do the same thing. And um, of course, you can create those hours with entrepreneurship. You can, you can create it around your schedule. Um, most days I don't start my day till 11 a.m., um, because in the morning I'm, I'm with my son, I have some fun with him, and I take him to school, and then I go work out, and I come home, and I shower, and I get ready for my day, and boom, 11 o'clock, I'm in my office, and I've got a call, or I'm, I'm ready to go. So I design it around my day. Um, that's a value of entrepreneurship, but if I didn't have those hours, you know, that's when things become vague, and, and you can't be vague when it comes to uh, your coaching business. You've heard myself, you've heard many people about, you know, talk about consistency, um, but what does really consistency mean? It's, it's that day in and day out grind of getting in your office and then it's doing those daily actions. Um, it, you know, and the daily actions about, quite simply, it's, it's getting your message out there. It's, it's doing a call like this, it's posting a video, it's writing something, it's commenting, it's interacting with people behind the scenes um, and creating those conversations um, to see where people are at and where their needs might be and, and if their needs are on something that you know, you can assist them with then asking, hey, would you consider hiring me as your coach? You know, uh, beginning of the call, what did I say? I said, hey, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one mentoring. If you're in that place, I asked, I put that seat out there. I'm not pressuring anyone. I'm just, I'm making it available. I'm making it known that, hey, this is what I do. This is how I can assist you. If you're in that place, you know, here's how to reach out to me. Um, and then I'm proactively engaging with people. You know, this is the day in and day out stuff that never ends. It never ends with entrepreneurship. Um, and there's, this, there's a certain piece to that where there's got to be a self-motivation. There's got to be a self-drive. There's got to be self-accountability. The simple fact is, you know, you could be in a mastermind group. You could be in a, you know, you could have an accountability partner. You could even have a coach, you know, that you're working with or even a mentor that you've hired, right? But there's still something, there's still an element that at the end of the day, I don't care who you're working with. You still got to be able to be driven yourself. You've got to have a big enough why to continually get in there. And, and you've got to be able to put aside the rest of your world, meaning, you know, you've got relationships, you've got maybe children, you know, you've got um, your health, and, you know, it could be things that be going on there, just other situations that are emotionally taxing. And, you know, when it comes time to you start your business hours, you know, it's like, how do you just stop that and put that aside and focus on your business. You know, you can't allow that to consume you. If you do, what happens is you lose a day, you lose a, a week, you lose a month. You can lose a year on that stuff and, and not move forward. And especially if you're, you know, in a job currently and you're doing coaching, you know, part-time in order to, you know, start to build it up and then ideally transition to full-time, you know, creating that transition, um, that can be just as a challenging situation, if not more, because your work hours or your business hours, so to speak, and you know those boundaries are even are even more important. I hate to even say they're more important than if you're doing it full time, um, but I, I want to stress the fact that it's like even if it's thirty minutes or an hour, um, that's all you have, and if you miss that, you, you could miss a day or two days very easily. Whereas if you're doing it full time and this is all you have, if you missed a couple hours here and there. Well, ideally, you can make it up because you don't have the nine-to-five job, um, assuming no other responsibilities get in the way. But we've got to become really good at setting aside those hours and then in those hours being able to produce and not being able to fool ourselves that, oh, I'm doing work, um, but fooling ourselves that you know, the work we're doing is actually going to grow our business. And when I say that, you know, doing actions like, like personal development, reading, learning, things like that, uh, if you're listening to a Tuesday call of mine, for instance, on the recording, that's not for your business. That's, that's, your, that's your own personal time that you're taking to become better at business. But don't fool yourself that that's business hours. You don't walk into a job and, and go to your desk and, and sit there reading a book. 
uh, even if it's a book on how to get better at your job, let's just say you're an accountant and you're, you're sitting at your desk uh, you know, during your, your work hours and the boss comes up to you and says, what are you doing? You're like, oh, I'm reading. You're like, well, you can't read during, you have to work. It's like, well, no, I'm reading a book on how to become a better accountant. It's like, you know, as much as we appreciate that, you need to do your work, not read a book on how to become a better accountant. So if you're, you're watching a, something on how to become a better coach or whatever it is around your business, you know, that's not, that doesn't count towards your business. Um, that's not going to grow your business. And when you say, well, Jeff, how, you know, I have to learn, I have to do that stuff. Great. But do that outside of your business hours. When you're in your, when you have your business hours, I want you creating content. I want you interacting with people. I want you finding places that you can speak at, um, finding people you can interview or be interviewed with. You, you got to be exposed to people. Your message has to be in front of people, your existing people and, and new people that then become part of your audience. And it's a day in, it's day out thing. It's, it's like having a child, you know, like those of you that have had children, whether it's brand new or it's been going on forever, you know, when you have a child, it's like, they're there, they just, they're never going away, hopefully, right? But th they're never going away. They are just, they are gonna be with you for the rest of your life. And yes, obviously as they get older, they start to live their own life. Um, but, you, but you're responsible for them, especially when they're the baby, and they, they never go away. And, and that's what I, I want your business to be. And that's, this is something you have to understand, is it's like, when you're doing your business, you can't just have it go away. Like, like if, you're a, if you're a parent, you've got a baby, you can't just, oh, I wanna sleep in this morning, and the baby's sitting there crying. Like, the baby needs you. You need to get your ass up and, and tend to the baby. Like, same thing. It doesn't matter what you feel. Oh, I'm just tired this morning. I'm not in a good mood, or I just don't feel like, or I, you know, my fears around this or you know, inhibiting me, and I'm paralyzed. I don't feel like doing a video today, or I don't feel like doing the call today. Um, it's like, you gotta treat it like a baby and be like, I don't care, just get up and do it. And, and the thing I found is, trust me, I still like that. There have, been, there have been many times where I just wasn't in the space to maybe do a call or, or, or anything like that matter for my business or make a video or, or whatever it was. But I found when I, when I, when I say force myself, I just, I coached myself to get in that space and to recognize the value of it and how I'm gonna feel after doing it. And inevitably, you know, once I did the call or, or did the, you know, the video or the, the marketing, if you will, get my message out there, I got myself into that zone and I became inspired because I love what I do. And, and all of a sudden that, that started to, to catapult and channel me into other areas and next thing you know, X amount of minutes, hours later, I'm focused and I'm getting things done. Um, and, and those are the things we've got to learn but we've also got to be able to be disciplined. I talk about that dif discipline, that self-discipline, the self-accountability, that self-motivation. Um, you can fill in the blank of any other emotion but You've got to have that, that self-discipline to be able to do those things um, even when it's tough. And that's that, if you will, that parallel to the job is, you know, you've got to show up every day no matter how you feel. You know, can you have sick days? Of course you can have sick days, right? Um, you know, if your kid's in a, a, a play or something like that and it's in the middle of the day, you know, can you go, you know, to the school in the middle of the day where, yes, you can do that, right? Um, whereas maybe if you had a job, you couldn't, right? That, that's some of the values of entrepreneurship. Um, but you got to plan for those things and you got to account for that and you've got to figure out, you know, what are the things I've got to get done today in terms of getting my message out there and um, if, if you're, you know, taking the time to go toward to anything or even if it's just taking some time in the sun because it's a beautiful day out and you want to eat lunch outside and lie in the sun and get a little tan for 30 minutes or whatever. You can, you can do that, but just make sure you, you know what you need to accomplish for that day and get those actions accomplished, right? And that's that grind, if you will. Um, and and like, like I said, I want to compare it to having a child, for those of you that have, even if you haven't, I think you can probably imagine it, um, is, is that's where entrepreneurship never stops. And, and where, where this really all came from, like I said, I started off this call of, you know, I was talking with my clients, is as I got into um, more of the, the daily actions and what's accounted for them, you know, that the reality of your business is, um, the majority of your efforts and your time aren't spent, I'll say it like this, maybe doing what you love. Let's just, let's assume that everyone that wants to start a coaching business loves coaching. Because really why else would you want to start a coaching business, right? You, there's something you're passionate about, you love coaching and however you came through it, through the experience, you're just like, oh, this is, the, I just want to do this. I love it. It fulfills me. It gives me purpose. I love helping people and whatever does it for you. Um, and yes, you get to do it. Um, but especially in the beginning, 
uh, as, you, as you build the business. And, and really, honestly, as you go through the business, you're always going for new business because there's some amount of turnover. There's always going to be turnover in your business. And there's that, those daily actions where the majority of the time you're not coaching. You know, like I said, I, I keep my coaching hours to 10 to 12 calls a week. Um, and I do that because I can create a great a six figure income doing that. And then, but that's 10 to 12 of my hours. And I could spend the next, the other, you know, 15 to 20 hours or so, typically what I put into a week, depending on you know, what's going on, that's all spent with doing the other stuff, interaction. Sometimes there's technical stuff, right? There's, there's all the other things that go into the business to get those maybe 10 to 12 hours of coaching, right? And so there's going to be a lot of aspects of that that some you might love, some you might hate. And, and there are some things that you're going to have to learn um, with the business. You know, there's some of the technical pieces where I don't recommend you figuring out how to design and do a website. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of great options out there, but we're not, if you're not built for that, you're not built for that. It's something, you know, you should hire out. You know, there's, you've got to find the places where you've got to delegate and you've got to pay for those things and you've got to find the things that you've just got to learn. But even from a technical side, there's some fundamental things that you've got to do from, you know, your email, email lists, sending out emails to people, um, you know, posting on your blog, uh, just, you know, emails, integrate, how that all integrates, some autoresponders. And if I'm using some words there that you're not quite familiar with, it's, those are some fundamental things that, um, yes, could you hire them out? Absolutely. Um, but you've got to be able to learn how to do that yourself um, because that's just the fundamental parts of the business. You know, you could grow to a certain point where, you don't have to do that anymore, but I know many, many multi, multi millionaires who do their business and, and you know, doing the email pieces and having the technical side and the, the back end to it is, um, they have some people do those things, but there's, a, there's an understanding of how it works because they've, they had to do it to get to that point, but they're still writing their emails, they're still creating the content, they're still um, interacting with the community no matter how big you get um, because that, that's you, you're the person, you're the person that they're there for, you're the person that they want and, um, and that's the place where um, it's, it's having that consistency of getting in there and doing that stuff. But it's, it's finding the things, uh, finding ways to get done the things that uh, maybe you're not comfortable with or you don't understand quite yet uh, because those pieces um, can be very frustrating and they can be very draining. Um, and you just got to find yourself like, you know, am I fit? Am I suitable to do these things? And if not, um, who's going to help me with these or who's going to be able to do them for me? Um, a, a lot of what you want to think about too um, within your business Coaching business is a, is a great uh, business because we don't have a lot of overhead, meaning I don't have to have an office, right? I don't have to have employees right away if, if you ever want to go there. Um, you know, the, the bulk of our overhead is in, you know, internet-based software, you know, like email systems, um, telephone capabilities, internet, um, you know, that type of software, you know, lead pages type stuff, you know, 20 30 $40 a month type subscription services that we use. You know, outside of that, unless you're doing like live seminars where you're getting into some print products like a book or um, handouts or things like that um, in, in the virtual space, the only other costs you have would be like, for instance, marketing costs if you're doing paid Facebook ads or on another social platform. You know, so the great part about our business is we don't have an over, a, a high overhead in terms of monthly expenses. Your biggest monthly expenses for your business unequivocally will be and or at least should be um, working with a mentor, working with someone. And this isn't like, oh, Jeff, you're just saying this because you, know, you want us to hire you. And it's like, no, I'm not saying that at all. I, I'm saying that is, is at some point you've got to realize you've got to hire somebody. I, I can't see how you'd be successful. And it doesn't, whether it's me or someone else, it doesn't matter to me. But you've got to be able to look into finding that person who can teach you, who can streamline the process. That's where your biggest expenses are going to be. But my point in saying this is, is I want you to start to recognize if you're going to do this as a business, you've got to start to figure out how you're going to fund some of that. Um, when I, I, maybe it's a pet peeve of mine, uh, but I did a video on this not too long ago because um, some people were asking in different groups, and hey, what's a great, you know, cheap or free way to get a, you know, whatever, you know, whether it's an email system or, you know, lead page or landing page, sorry, or something like that. And it, it's like, 
like there's a lot of free versions of software and things like that, but at some point you've got you've to gotta buy stuff, you've got to pay for stuff. And I'm not suggesting spend money to spend money, um, but there's a point of entrepreneurship where you've got to be able to fund things and buy things and you've got to, if you're ready to do a website and the time's ready for you and you've got some social media presence, like you've got to invest in a website at some point. If that's the direction you want to go down, I mean, you can still get away without it. You can still create a profitable business without it. But if you're going down that road, don't try and, you know, cheap out or just kind of figure it out yourself. It's like, if that's something you're going to do, like find someone, hire someone, take two, three thousand dollars, put it aside and make a kick-ass website and get it done. Um, if you're going to do some videos, you, again, you don't need to make it expensive, but just it, buy a little lavalier mic, you know, get some, you know, use some natural daylight, get a tripod, you know, if you, and again, little costs here and there, um, but it's doing things the right way. Um, and doing things the right way doesn't necessarily always mean we have to have expenses, um, but not being afraid to have those when we need them and allocating them in the right spots. That's where having a mentor can help you as well. They can guide you in some of those places. Um, but I, 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 that's something to consider. So if, if you have so much financial pressure and you got to figure out your financial tolerance for entrepreneurship um, and how much you can take and how much you can handle, and again, this doesn't mean you should just quit if, if you don't have any financial tolerance, um, or you're not good with some of these things, or if, or if you even think you, don't, you can't afford to have a business, doesn't mean you should, should quit or you should quit your business now. Rather, what I'm saying is you've just got to realize that there's going to be some expenses within your business. And, and when you need them and when you want them, or sorry, when it's necessary for them, you've got to be able to get them. Um, like I can't tell you how many people I've talked with and, and even some mentoring clients, I say, okay, you need, you need something to process your credit cards. You know, I recommend, here's what I recommend, authorized.net. And whether you use that or not, I don't care, but here are some options. You, you got to pick one, sign up for it, and go. And even though you're not getting paid right now, ideally you're going to get paid very soon, but you've got to have that ready. You've got to have that ready, and, and you're paying 15, 30 bucks a month, depending on what you're using. You're not using it yet, but you've got to get it, right? You've got to get it ready. So you've got to be able to think, like, if you're going to do this business, I, I got to go all in with this. And, um, and you might have to borrow some money, and <laughs> however you end up doing that and funding that, you have, to, you have to recognize this is the direction that you're going down. You've got to recognize that tolerance. Um, and also when the terms of financial tolerance is and whether you're going to be quitting your job to get this, um, the, the road of entrepreneurship of any business, and I don't care what's, what type of business you have, but especially with coaching, and there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows financially, um, you're not getting a consistent paycheck. This is one of the major differences of employee versus entrepreneur. You know, uh, Employees get paid for time. Entrepreneurs get paid for results they create within time. Very, very big difference. You can sit in your office for eight hours and walk out of there and not get paid. Whereas a job, I can show up for eight hours and kind of do whatever I need to do and get out of there and I'll, and I'll get paid no matter what, whether I'm performing or not. So that, that's the big difference. And there's going to be highs and lows with your income. There's going to be one month where it's like, wow, I just got a bunch of clients. You can be feeling on top of the world. Next thing you know, X amount of weeks or months later, it's like, oh my God, I just, you know, two or three clients just stopped and I just haven't got any new clients and where's my income coming from and, you know, the bills don't stop. You know, you've got to be able to deal with that and understand those aspects of it. And, and that's something that never goes away, right? It, it never goes away. Um, I gave a statistic last, uh, last week on the call that I did that, you know, within 10 years, uh, 96% of businesses are out of business, whatever, how they, however they fail, they quit or they stop, they're out of business. Um, that means, you know, after 10 years, at least 4% have made it, you know, and that doesn't mean, oh, 10 years were set. Well, what's going to happen over time as technology changes, as needs change, as the world changes, you've got to evolve and you've got to be creative and you've got to adapt and you've got to have that adaptability. This isn't set to scare anybody. This isn't sent to, um, you know, drive you to quit or anything like that. This is just some of the realities that I really want you to think about um, because, Going back to that client that I was talking about, um, last week we got to the place on our call where um, I actually said it. I'm like, I, I just feel like you need permission to quit your business. And, and when I said that, it was like this, this almost like this release of relief that like, wow, it, it felt good hearing that because everything that this person was talking about was just, I don't know. And they were just like, um, I'm thinking about it and it's just like not, nothing about it appeals to me. All I love to do is coach. I just wish I could be in a situation where, you know, I could just get paid to coach. Like people could just give me clients. And I said, well, I wish I could 
tell you a place where you could, you know, have that situation, uh, but I don't know of a place, you know, unless you find someone who's, you know, has an overflow of clients and it works. I mean, it's possibility, but a lot of people don't want to do all the other stuff and, and not with super detail today that I'm talking about, but I'm kind of giving an overview of all the other stuff we've got to handle in terms of daily actions, logistical things we're doing, but also the emotional um, load that we've got to carry and deal with in and outside of our business and how that all plays and integrates into our business and our ability to be consistent on a daily basis. Um, and it's just, I, I felt like, I just said, I feel like you need permission to quit. And, and I'm like, I, I don't want to tell you to quit, um, but I feel like you need someone to just be like, listen, this, this is not for you. You know, I think you should consider quitting. And that's exactly where this person was. And that's exactly where we left the call. And I said, you know, this, this doesn't be black and white, you know, like, oh, you're never going to do this again. But just, just consider that over the next two or three weeks and see how it feels and just get away from it, you know, and, and don't, you know, don't try and do anything for your business. Don't coach. Don't try and get anything out there and just see what it feels like um, and take a look and an idea of where you're at and what you're looking for and see where you go from there. And that's all I ask you guys to do too is, is just my hope is, is that, you know, you get, you get inspired and be like, yeah, no matter what, um, I'm going to do this because I know this is what I want and this is what I'm going after. And, and if that's the case, uh, then commit to it. And, and as those obstacles come and as those challenges come, um, just deal with them as they come and figure out as they come and have your support network. Um, I can't tell you how many clients on a daily basis that either through email or through actually, you know, a call that we have, whether it's a group call or a one-on-one -on -one call where, you know, they come to me and it's just like they're down and they're struggling and they're dealing with the emotion of, um, you know, maybe feeling rejected or um, people not showing up or people not buy buying or not feeling like this is for them because, um, you know, they, they feel uncomfortable maybe selling something or, you know, can't take income or whatever the case may be. Um, and even lastly, I'll say this before I open the call up is, is sometimes it's just, it's dealing with people. When I say dealing with people, it, it's not people like you and I, it's just people in general. And when I say people in general, people in general suck, right? And you know, I love people, but when I say deal with, when I say people suck is that the average person is indecisive. They're wishy-washy. They don't know what they want. This is why they require us, Right. Um, but that's where it, it, we've got to understand. That's why I like to teach selling because we want to understand where these people are. And sometimes they need permission. Sometimes we need, we need to be able to ask them. So like, I can't tell you how many t calls I, I've been at the end where I, I've been like, listen, I feel like you want to do coaching, but you just need someone to tell you, like, let's do this, you know? And it's like, yeah, you're right. I do need that, you know, because they're so used to asking for things or not, not following through with something because they need permission or they're just going to feel like they're going to get turned down again. So they don't ever take that time to, you know, invest time, money, and energy on themselves and hire a coach like us, you know. So we're dealing with people, and, and ultimately that can be th the hardest part about our business outside of dealing with the, the most challenging person ever, and that's ourselves, right? We are the most challenging person that we'll ever have to deal with in terms of self-doubt and, and self-sabotage and all those negative little beliefs we have inside of our head. And, and I don't care who you are, we all have or have had those at some point. And, and I'm just a believer that they don't ever go away, um, but we, be, we can become stronger, we can develop new beliefs um, that can squash those old beliefs, that overshadow them so that they don't um, surface much, if at all. Uh, but ultimately, they're, they're all still there. I've, I've worked with people on, on very different high levels and had some very intimate, you know, uh, real conversations with them behind the scenes. And, seen people you know very high up in very big big places um, in, in all meanings of that word and they have the same insecurities that you and I do and people just starting off as well you know people are human we are human and that's the most challenging person that you'll have to deal with and um, as you get to the place of um, whether it's daily or weekly or hopefully not that frequently daily but uh, you know faced with that maybe that thought of maybe I should quit this maybe I should stop this um, it's not a bad question to ask. And, and, and um, Vince Lombardi said, you know, winners never quit and quitters never win. Um, but I actually challenge that and say, well, quitters win all the time, you know, because we just know what is important to quit. And maybe it's not your coaching business, right? Maybe it's some other drama in your life. Maybe it's some other responsibilities or some things that you're attached to that you deserve to quit in order to free up some energy or space so you can focus on your coaching business. Maybe it's your job you need to quit, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is. 
Um, so it's not necessarily the coaching business. Um, but ultimately, if I can you know, close this call off and say, um, if this is coming up and you're having these challenges, which you will have anyways, um, especially if it keeps coming up, I would definitely look at the word quitting. And if it's not your business, it's like, what, what do I deserve to quit? And, and like I said, that could mean a lot of different things. Um, but when you ask that question and become okay with stopping um, and challenge maybe a belief that you have that, oh, when I commit to something, I'm, I'm all in. Um, but if you're all in and it's just, it's killing you and every day it's weighing on you and it's taking away from you enjoying life and being alive and ultimately just having fun and interacting with people because at the end of the day, as much as I love my business, it's like, I want to be with my son and my friends and my family and, and I want to have fun and do the things I love. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love what I do as my business, but it, it's, it's not me, right? It's, it's, a, it's a big piece of me if it fills me in a lot of different ways, but ultimately you've got to have fun. So if this, if this is something that's just, it's pulling you away from being yourself, um, that's where I want you to start considering some of this stuff. Um, and think long and hard about it, talk to some people about it. Um, but it, at least it's going to bring you closer to some clarity about maybe what direction you deserve or want to go down. And um, whether it's you know, quitting your business or moving forward with it, um, it's becoming okay with that decision. Um, and if it is quitting, um, then it's like, and if you don't like that word, use a different word. You, know, you just might have a bad association with it. Um, but either way, it, it allows you to kind of seal off something, and most likely an energy leak that's gonna now fill you up and you're gonna feel stronger and feel good. And now you can start channeling in areas that can be effective and healthy and productive for you. And you can start feeling like you're moving forward.